is like I, I don't know what he did. I'm, I'm gonna assume that this is like. A <laughs> I won't play the squat game. I won't play the pause game. Or the squat game. I won't play any games. Just serious, serious conversations about gaming. <laughs> Anytime. What? Now. Huh? Now. <laughs> no one's you know what? Alive. This is Drunken Larry at Evercon 24. And I'm with... I'm Travis here with Guys Games and Beer at Evercon 2024, and we are here with our good friend. Absolutely. Best friend. <gasps> Amazing Aww. friend. Aww. I'm going to get goosebumps and cry. I am Christopher from was... JJGames.com and the Midwest Gaming Classic. It is so, so awesome to have you here this weekend with us. Uh, our best con friend, uh, Chris, that... is here to talk about some of the really awesome stuff they got here. They're uh, they're great enough to uh, spend spend some time talking about some current projects they got going on. And Tell you kinda... what, that is that is nugget love right there. Oh well, yeah, nugget love. So make some popcorn and settle in because this is gonna take about an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll just watch Larry's drunken descent into madness. Uh, but basically, I know since the last time we've got had you guys on the show. You guys have been up to a lot lately. Yeah. And turning. Yeah. I know, obviously, we talk about the Midwest Gaming Classic on the show a lot, but there's a lot of really other cool stuff coming up with JJ Games and with the Midwest Gaming Classic to kind of spread the love a little more year-round. So yes. So what's, what's been new with y'all? All right. Uh, where to begin? Uh, let's begin with JJ Games. Um, if you don't know, uh, in June of 2022, uh, the company had the opportunity to purchase another 20 plus year online retro game shop. And so now we have two. Well, they already had GoatStore.com. Which games of all types? Ooh. Games of all types, yep. And then we now we have JJ Games, another 20 plus year. Uh, so between the two, we have uh, just around 20,000 items listed. Uh, don't go to eBay because we have to charge more there for the, for the fees. Go straight to JJGames.com. Uh, which is open and goatstore.com is getting so, a refurb on the website right so now. With the, uh, with the uh, addition of the uh, JJ Games, uh, did you get more unique access to more unique things? Yeah, because the name recognition of both JJ Games and Goatstore brings a lot of people to us. The main difference, the main thing that happened is that Goatstore was predominantly um, N64, Dreamcast, and before. And JJ Games has a lot of disc-based inventory, so now we're we've got we're the go-to source for Xbox, PlayStation, Wii, um, Wii U, uh, and and a lot of the newer platforms, all the way up to PS4 and Xbox One. We don't the the current generation of prices is hard to judge right now, so we we don't really do much with that. All I'm saying is, and this is this is coming from a professional game hunter, game collector, and it's like finding yeah, shops like yeah. Here. I would think I, I would, would I would say I, would I, I know a little that. bit of knowledge. So <laughs> I I absolutely love using Goat Store and JJ Games. It's a great place again, especially oh again, my god, if you're, if you're looking side side thing. This this guy in Japan was like a ninja. He was just bouncing around all over the place. I literally came back from Akihabara with like three suitcases to take back ah, to the hotel and nice. mail it all back. I literally, I, I airmailed so much stuff back from Japan. And then I, I came home and bought some Gatchapon machines. But, uh, so, but again, as as somebody who really likes looking for great deals on games, again, going to actual game retailer sites versus going to eBay versus mm-hmm. looking at these shops is like, you're going to find some great deals. Yeah. It's really, it is really great to dig and find some cool stuff. Cause like you're, those are, I got, I, I'm not going to lie. I found some really, really great deals that were underpriced on goat store. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, the goat store. <laughs> so goat store, because MGC was growing so fast. This is a great segue. MGC was growing so fast. Goat store was a little 
like they forgot to mow the lawn and you know clean the windows <laughs> and stuff like that. And so I it came was by over, and stole the goats. It was an overrun. Dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was it was not quite abandoned, but definitely the people living in goat store at the time uh, weren't weren't really doing upkeep. So there were a lot of price changes that had to be done when they hired me full time for the company as employee number one, three, if you include the owners. But Ooh, are one. you seven of nine? I'm, I'm, num I'm number one of three. Ah, or three of one. one. Of three. three. Three of three. There's Math your is hard when you're drinking with Larry. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so having everything under one umbrella means that if you missed out on some of the show exclusive games from the Midwest Gaming Classic for years past, especially last year, you can find them at jjgames.com now. Goat Store is getting some refurb on the website, and because the show is coming up, we put a pause on that right now. Uh, if there's something you're looking for and you don't see it on JJ Games that might be on Goat Store, you can just email store at jjgames.com, and I will respond. So uh, you guys are here in person. Uh, yeah. yeah. Second year in at, a row, as a matter of fact. At, at Africa. So is, is it a, a, so just kind of how the sausage is made kind of thing. Do you make a decision on like when you go to a con to discount anything or do you like just leave it what it is online or uh, how does that kind of yeah. work? No, that's a great question, Larry. Um, what we do is because there's more overhead with the website and we have free shipping at $75 uh, and there's a bunch of other things that we have to pay for, like, you know, the e-commerce platform and all of that. Those prices are slightly higher than what we bring here, which we just, I made an algorithm. We're going to get into, you want to get into the sausage. I made an algorithm <laughs> that takes into account things like average market price. When was the last time I saw it? How many do we have in the inventory? And then the price gets shot out and I upload a database to the site. Here... I simplify all of that and I just go with basically what the average market price is because I love talking to people who there was a dude in a Vans hoodie and hat and he's like oh my god I've been looking for these Tony Hawk games forever and I was like yeah that's why I love doing what I do um, so prices in person when we when we're when we're here when we're somewhere selling like we are here uh, are definitely uh, lower than on the website also, again, you know, we gotta gotta love going to cons. You know, you see you see those bins, the uh, you know three for twenty. You're like, all right, I'm gonna yeah. pick pick some great deals. So it's uh, always really fun uh, to go, and especially your guys' inventory is so massive. It's well, really cool. Oh my god! And, and but in order to keep a massive inventory, you gotta procure it somehow. Yep. Yep. So we have to do a lot of turnover. There's three main ways that uh, we come into possession of new inventory. Uh, the first way is we have some people that know we have the shops, uh, worked with the former owner of JJ Games, um, or worked with, with Dan and Gabby in the past. And, uh, and they, that's where we get huge lots from. The last lot I bought from one of them was 8,490 items. Woo! Yeah. And this man meticulously goes through, Everything. checks condition, yep. uploads. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's time consuming. To do one of those deals is probably six to eight weeks of back and forth because people will give me a list of stuff and it's incomplete. I'm like, I need to know, is there, is there a box? Is there a manual? You know, what's it look like? Can you, if, and if something is something, so at JJ Games, what I personally try to do is make sure that there's uh, actual images of the item for anything that's $25 or more. Below that, it's kind of a, it, there's no ROI, there's no return on investment there because, but then I'll have like 15 of them. Well, I group them by how good they look, basically, right? Is the, for carts, is the whole label there? with no gouges in it, then that's good. And I can put 10 of them that are all $10 and nobody's gonna really complain. So, but at that $25 price point is when I like to make sure that there's actual images of that actual item. So if you're if you're looking at the site and you're like, oh, this thing is $49, that's the one you get. So, so um, I mean, big lots, 
do you work with individuals with smaller things like uh, what kind of one-offs? Yeah. Or uh, okay. Again, okay. people email store at jjgames.com. Uh, you'll get me because I'm the only person manning the shop, <laughs> and uh, uh, I I try to offer the best price I can based on our algorithm and uh, projected. There's a couple sites out there that price on projected inventory, and that makes their prices kind of wacky. Uh, I like to stay as close to market average as possible, unless it's something that's really hard to find, but even though it has a lower price point, it's there's going to be a premium on that a little bit because, oh my God, I haven't seen one of these for 18 months. I, I know it's not going to be in the store for more than an hour or three. Um, NES cards specifically. There's one buyer we have uh, who will buy them before I'm done listing the whole batch. <laughs> I'm just like, oh. I mean, it's definitely, uh, yeah. I mean, there's definitely an understanding that's got to be there, you know, yeah. how things uh, how things are going to sit long. You know, sometimes you see on eBay and uh, you you look up some game and it's listed at 300. Yeah. No. Oh my God, I got gold. And I'm like, right, it, you know, right. that thing's been sitting there for like eight months. At and there's, that price. there's no, nobody's going to buy it at that there's price. There's no limitations on what, <laughs> what you can list something for price wise there. So you have to look at what's sold recently and then you'll get a real idea of kind of like what that's actually worth. And we try to, it's no, it's no secret. I try to give as much as I can. But keep the company running and keep Dan off my back about it. Uh, yeah, sorry, you should Dan. look for the new YouTube show called JJ Star. That's a <laughs> <laughs> JJ Star. Yeah, yeah. It'll, what it'll be is just a lot of typing, me mumbling under my breath about like, sorry, I can't give you full price for that thousand uh, know dollars what, you know of stuff you have. Here's, here's forty dollars because I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I can say is that definitely, again, I, shopping online at jjgames.com is an awesome experience. There's a lot of cool stuff. It's, just, it's one of those sites that's just fun to browse through and like look through, see what you guys have, because it's just such a massive inventory for every generation of game. Absolutely. Uh, definitely pick up, uh, check things out, pick up a few things. I know you guys, obviously, running JJ Games here. You're here representing the Midwest Gaming Classic as well. We're kind of getting close to that season of MGC. How's, yeah. how's that been for y'all? Uh, it's it's really busy. So last year, Evercon was in January, and we had plenty of time to be here and then go back and get, get like, the last couple months are always the, the absolute ramp up to the show. Uh, and this year, we have Evercon, and then Anime Milwaukee, where we'll be at, uh, just representing the show, not, not really selling much, aside from probably some exclusive show mgc show just games. our souls oh, and uh, yeah in our souls uh, and then like two weeks later the show it's we're 35 days to the show right now so you can absolutely believe Does that, that feel scary? we're putting in 12 plus hours a day just updating the website that, like that's most of what i do for the show aside from on-site ticketing uh, making sure that all goes smoothly i have a new system i have a really good crew they basically said, you don't have to be at ticketing for the whole show anymore. And I was like, oh, sweet. I can go the move The ticket to the king can thing. take a break? I can. So, yeah, I'm just going to stroll around. Mm -hmm. The is ticket stuff. Now, <laughs> so, I mean, the, the uh, MGC is obviously a very large production. Um, and so... Do you want to know how large? It's, it's very large. 250,000 square feet. Uh, yeah. We just reclaimed uh, at, from construction of the convention center 33,000 square feet that we didn't have That's last a whole year. So, so, it's, right. a so, so it's, yeah, it's a large yeah. production. Yeah. yeah. So but, we, but, but you've been at it for a little while. Within, we've been so, at it for a little while. But do you still get nervous about like... There's, oh, yeah, there's always jitters of uh, night of. So like... <laughs> But we've learned from it, like, uh, don't set up ticketing at 4 o'clock on Friday and see if it works. Because at 6 o'clock on Friday, people want to get in the show. So now it's like, okay, 4 o'clock on Thursday we set it up, and then we see all the stuff that broke through PHP updates or whatever over the last year. Like the website had a bunch of back-end stuff that was broken specifically because of that, uh, which we have finally sorted through. And then, uh, so, and then we figure out where the line's going to go. Uh, Pre-sale tickets really help because then we know we're going to have a good show because we already have money coming in that allows us to buy content this is, or... 
this is a reminder again a reminder. For, for shows definitely again especially local shows like midwest gaming classic they run on pre-sale tickets so yeah you know if you're watching this you're thinking about going like spend the money it helps deliver a better show experience for everybody because they're using that especially midwest gaming classic <laughs> To put on a better show. If you uh, and hate as, it, you standing in line we for an about this hour show all before year. the show, pre-sale tickets always get in first. And so, <laughs> so just going back to the uh, the the JJ Games and and the Gold Store, um, you know these things kind of ebb and flow a little bit. Uh, what is the current hot genre? Um, you know, okay, that's a great question. You know what's super hot right now? Just throw out a platform you think is super bit hot right now. Oh, right. Any console. What console do you think? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, TurboGrafx-16. Okay. What do you got, Travis? Uh, I'll go with the PlayStation 3. It's the Atari 2600. What? what? <laughs> because Atari just put out the 2600 Plus. Oh, it plays okay. 2600 cartridges okay. and 7800 cartridges, and they are flying off the shelves. Now, in the next couple months, yeah, TurboGrafx-16 is probably going to be because Hyperkin is coming out with a clone console for it. And I don't think it's going to be as busy as the Atari 2600 rush we've seen. Like, I sold through, just as an example, um, 12 new shrink-wrapped copies of 2600 games. Uh, but then, like, across seven or eight titles. Oh, wow. So maybe 100 new still in shrink wrap games that probably wouldn't have sold. We have also sold tons of loose carts that most likely Dan and Gabby bought 20 years ago and have been oh, sitting see. on. <laughs> like a fine They're storing cheese. nostalgia so you don't have to. They're like, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have the basement space? I, we do. <laughs> you know, in the museum here, I, I actually saw a game I had, I had not seen. I mean, there was a lot of 2600 uh, cartridges, so... Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things that, that anybody could have seen. But Pressure Cooker, I'm like, ooh. Oh, yeah. A, it, it, and I'm watching it, and I'm like, yeah, that's a game I could get into. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say absolutely. And it, it's it's been really cool. Like, we always love working with JJ Games, with Midwest Gaming Classic, because we share a lot of the same values when it comes to gaming. And, like, it's, we're, we're all out at these same cons like Evercon here. You know, kind of sp spreading the love of what, what we do, and we, we do it because we love it. It's you know, yeah. This is this is the the live shows are great because I can only we can only have so much of a conversation in email. But you show up at the booth and we start talking, and suddenly twenty minutes, thirty minutes has gone by, and I know what your favorite games are, and you know what I like to play, and stuff like that. And that's really cool because that's more connection. And then if you come to the store and you buy. Uh, then you know who you're talking to as well, and I think that's that's something you don't get with a lot of the other places that maybe don't go to the cons or stuff like that. Um, I have to. I have a whole bunch of stats I have to rattle off for MGC yeah, by contract. Dan Dan said. So, listen up. If you haven't got your tickets yet, or you're on the fence because of it, listen to this. This year will be the biggest MGC we have ever had, especially because we just got 33,000 extra square feet back. That puts us at over a quarter of a million square feet. Whoa. That's wild. 200 plus vendors in the vendor hall. That's, that's wow. massive because that 33,000 extra square feet went into the vendor hall, which was full. And then we were like, oh, now we can get some more vendors. So there's going to be more vendors. Uh, we just said that Christopher Sean is coming back. Heck yeah. So he, if you don't know, he was on a bunch of other stuff, and he's the lead role in uh, Ultraman Rising, which is coming to Netflix soon. Uh, he did a voice of the toy maker in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Uh, he's a really great dude. Uh, also coming to the show this year, brand new, is Steve Tower Henneberry from right. American Gladiators, and oh, you can right. joust against him. Don't worry, it's not get your I'll, butt totally I'll kicked up that American Gladiator <laughs> joust we, style. We've <laughs> talked about this, again, we talked about the MGC all year, and again, it's just such a unique convention because the way you get to interact with talent that comes to the show and people from the industry yeah. is so unlike yeah. any other convention that we go to, and we go to them all year, 
it's they're not just sitting in a booth where you go nope. say hi and they're gone. Like yep. they're interacting with people throughout the show. You can play games. They're performing. They're I get they're, they're gaming. They're hanging out. You know, it's always an excellent time to just see who gets to mingle with at the show. And you just like it's. I mean, we've made so many connections because of Midwest Gaming Classic and. GTB wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for them. So, again, I would highly recommend just, again, seeing all, again, on their show page, they have a list of talent yep. that's going to be there, things you can do at the show. It is beyond belief how cool it is. Tournaments are ramping up. We just dropped the whole main stage lineup. A lot of great music acts are coming back. We're going to have uh, live comedy stand-up bits in don't, between. Don't forget the Lords of the Trident. There's definitely, yeah, Lords of Trident. Brian himself is playing a set on the main stage. Uh, Subspace, Mechanical, Life Vein are back. We got some new people like Luxy and uh, Michael and Flutaboo, and I'm just trying to think of all the stuff off the top of my head. Uh, the Mortal Kombat guys are back, of course. Oh, great. Uh, fantastic people. Love to hang out with them. The Kung Lao show is amazing music. Uh, it's just so cool. Um, what else am I forgetting? Man. Oh, uh, we got the uh, original mocap people from Resident Evil. Oh, really? I hadn't heard that the one. Crazy. Wow. Maybe you heard it here first. I don't know. Uh, well, I'll, I'll skip over the rest well, of that. There you go. All <laughs> um, right. So. Oops. Uh, now I'm fired. <laughs> but Dan and I just had this conversation. I'm like, and I'm like, the worst thing you could do to me right now is fire me or give me more work. And he's like, I can't fire you. Who's going to drive the van home? <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, it's seriously like every year the Midwest Gaming Classic just continues to impress and like what it brings to bring unique talent to the show as well as, you know, familiar stuff that we all get to experience together every year. And like, Again, we, a lot of the reason we spend so much time at these conventions together and you guys do Midwest Gaming Classic, again, it's the love of the culture. It's yeah. the love of the game, the love of the history. We love um, hearing the stories from the shows about, like, oh, like, even beyond, like, I was looking for this game for 10 years and I found it at the show. But, like, I got to... I got to hang out with Ted DiBiase, and there's a picture of me, me and him just leaning against the fence talking. Yeah. Stuff like that is just fantastic. It's really, it's really a place to just it's create so memories. You know, I really network. wanted them to actually take a position, but no. All they wanted to do was be on the fence. Ha, 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 ha. So, again, obviously you guys are getting to, you know, really get into crunch time for this convention. Yeah. And, Again, you guys are putting in a lot of work. You'll be you're here with us. You know things are going smoothish. You guys have been doing it for a few years. Yeah. I would, I would, you know, I'd say you're, you're you're professionals at this point. What's happened is the community, which helped make the show in the first place, uh, always comes up next this next year and is like, "Hey, we've been doing X for for a couple of years." Well. Here's the whole plan for X this year. And that's one thing that suddenly Dan can just clear off of his list of 4,000 things before the show. And we can't do the show without the community. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, so thank you, Mal. Absolutely. <laughs> like the Midwest Gaming Classic is such an integral part. Again, we're here at Evercon, too. And like they've also been really like, great, hospitable hosts. This feels us. like. MGC ten years ago. It that's, does. That's, it really. Is. I walked in, walking down that hallway now where the artist alley is. I was like, oh man, I remember when we had hallways this narrow and and just were putting tables wherever we could and uh, like clearing out hotel rooms to have VR Us. experiences and you guys <laughs> and all kinds of crazy stuff going well, on. And I got tell it. you what, we could reminisce for days and hours. <laughs> we sure could probably. And we could talk days MGC, plus hours uh, for. Another hour, but you know what? We should probably uh, start wrapping up. And uh, you could see all of us at these events. Yeah, especially uh, Evercon this weekend or the Midwest Gaming Classic April 5th through the 7th at the Baird Center in downtown Milwaukee. Tickets yeah. on sale now. Absolutely. And again, <laughs> remember, we live and die by the community. Pre-sale tickets are the ways to go. Uh, yep. We'll be there, obviously, the whole weekend, entertaining, having fun with everybody. Again, everybody there is super fucking friendly. We absolutely love spending time with them. Oh, fuck. We can swear? <laughs> <laughs> and, fuck uh, yeah. Yeah, we're looking forward to spending time with y'all really soon. So, again, thanks for joining us here with the coverage of Evercon 2024. I'm Travis with Guys Games and Beer. This is Drunken Larry with Guys Games and Beer. We've been here with Christopher Rick of JJGames.com and the Midwest Gaming Classic. Again, go go do some shopping. It's really fun to peruse through their site. So even if yeah. you're just window shopping, take, need, take a little time. There's there's deals to be found. I there. need my next 8,000 item lot. So buy the 8,000 that are up there now. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Bye. Thank you.